Well, hello and happy Wednesday. I think we're live. I'm not really sure anymore. Uh, I'm Doug. I am a uh, guy with a lot of questions, a guy that's very curious about things in life, a guy with a little show called Engagement, and uh, a guy just pulling it together today real quick. So welcome to Engagement. That could be a little bit longer, I'll tell you that. So uh, I'm an efficient. I'm a guy with uh, a lot of questions. I'm a, a guy with a, a bent for a giggle and a drink. Cheers, by the way. And uh, I have a show called Engagement. People say to me all the time, hey, Doug. And they basically yell at me across the street as I'm walking. Hey, Doug, uh, you got a show called Engagement. Is it because you're an efficient? Is it just for people getting married? And I say, heck no, it's for those that are curious to engage in conversation and, you know, have a have a little wit about themselves. So I started a show during COVID, thank you, COVID, uh, called Engagement, where we talk about basically whatever tickles my fancy. And from time to time, it's been things like, um, you know, drinking. Um, it's been about uh, phenomenal females. It has been about uh black lives uh in business it's been about um those important phenomenal females it's been about whatever really tickles my fancy and along the way we've had some laughs we've had some jokes and we are kicking off season five if you can't believe it uh of this funny little show that uh that no one watches <laughs> but we do it nonetheless so uh we've got uh kicking off season five before we get to some really serious, you know, uh, heartfelt, uh, heady stuff coming in the future, um, we thought we'd have a little laugh, with a little giggle and a drink. So tonight uh, on our show, I have a special co-host. Uh, she's like a like a little sister to me. She's like a pimple I can't get rid of. She's like uh, the redheaded stepsister. Um, and you've seen her before on the show. Uh, she asked me last year, hey, Doug, I'd like to explore some more drinks. I only drink like vodka and soda. And beer, um, you like to mix up drinks, and I do. Um, what if we were to like, you know, try some other drinks? So I had her on the show last year, and you watched her sip away. Uh, it looked something like this, and she got coined the name Boozy Susie, and she's become a bit of a sidekick from now and then. So let's welcome in uh, Susie mm. as <laughs> she's drinking away. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You. I'm good. You can barely hear you. What's going on over there? You're awfully quiet. Uh, well, you know, um, not much is going on. I'm just enjoying the weather and, you know, uh -huh. drinking, of course, because that's what I do. That's what you do. Let's see if I can just turn your mic up a little bit for you here from, from a distance. How's that? Can I hear you now? Mic check. Uh, can you hear me now? Mic, mic check. check. Mic check. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke, folks. Yeah, and we always think of it at the same time. We do, unfortunately, share a brain. Yeah. So, Susie, uh, yeah. today happens to be McHappy Day. Oh, yes. Yes, McHappy which Day. is kind of a big deal for a lot of us, the McHappy Day, you know, where, where people give um, part of proceeds of what they buy at McDonald's when they probably shouldn't be eating that anyhow um, right. to McDonald's and Ronald McDonald House. And your daughter, who is uh, um, kind of like my surrogate best friend uh libby has done something for a long long time uh, in the way of a uh, lemonade stand there's libby with yep. some of our local officials at her lemonade stand making money for ronald mcdonald house yep you should be very proud of her she Thanks. gets her philanthropic i think from her uncle doug i think so because she doesn't get it from me no 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 she doesn't mm -hmm. uh and so i've got some pictures i, I creeped your page as i always do every morning and here's little Libby at Ronald McDonald House bringing her first bundle of money. And here she is again. Yep. How cool she was. I know. And here she is again. That was her first one, actually. That was her, That's cash in that envelope, right? It is, yeah. Nice. Good, cold, hard cash. Oh. There she is. The check is as big as she is. Yeah. And here she is again. And that was last year. Notice the and map. then here would be the year before. Oh, that was last year. No, now, was, make up your mind. Two years in a row, we had masks, I guess. Jeez. Yes, we did. It's called COVID. Yeah. Yes. I forgot. Yeah. 
So um, I just wanted to shout out because Libby does a great job every year with the Eliminated yeah. Sand. How many years in a row has this been for her? Um, I think it has been uh, about 10 years now. 10 years. That's, that's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And so, the money goes to Ronald McDonald every year? Every year. The whole shebang goes to Ronald McDonald House, and they have been so helpful. Like, they always send us material and whatever, but for the last couple of years, we haven't been able to have it in person. I, I think we're going to have it in person this year. It's going to be a bit delayed because she seems to be involved in a lot of things this year. So a very busy child. Yeah, so it'll either be delayed or it will strictly be online again, but we will figure it out and we will still do it. It just, it will happen just, you know, and every year her goal is to beat the previous year. And every year I tell her, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to beat the previous year and every year she has. So do you know what her total has been so far? Like a grand total? It's, I know that it's a good mom would know this. (laughs) No, well, I'm not a very good mother. Um, speaking of Mother's Day, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, um, I know it's over ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars that she has um, raised in the last ten years. But you know, like the first year was like two fifty, and then it went to like I don't know four hundred, and like last year it was thirty two hundred, thirty three hundred, or something. And you know, if I was smarter, I would have written it down before I did the show. Uh, but I'm not that smart. That. Yeah, there is that. So. So for those who don't know, Susie has uh, achieved the, uh, um, well, she's sort of like, I'd say that she's like gum on my shoe. <laughs> I love gum on my shoe. I know you do love that. <laughs> yes, if you could scrape it off and chew it, you probably still would. Um, and she's uh, always there. You'll find her quite often in my selfies, just over my shoulder. She's got to be the, the closest one to uh, any of my pictures I take. So um, I've invited her along because our, our guest tonight is a comedian and he's coming to Chatham Kent for a show. And he has a, he has a, 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 a buddy, a, a, a co-host, a, a sidekick, if you will. And his sidekick is actually quite funny. Um, very similar to you and I, Susie. Yeah. We're you know, hilarious. One, one of us is, you know, eye candy and the other one's just funny. So. I guess you're the funny one. <laughs> 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 so I, normally I would, I would introduce uh, this gentleman, his name is Jeff Leeson, um, but I, I think it'd be better if we let his mom introduce him. So let's watch this real quick. So hey everyone, I'm Betty and I'm Jeff's mom. Yes, mom. Thanks so much for being here and thank you for helping Jeff celebrate this amazing milestone in his career. No one knows more than I do how hard he's worked to get to this point. He was just 14 years old when he realized that making people laugh with his passion was his passion in life. And you know, the last 19 years have not been easy. There have been lots of hurdles and lots of challenges, but through dedication and hard work, Jeff has been able to build a career that seemed almost impossible for a young man from London, Ontario. It was also a career that I once hoped was just a phase he was going through. (laughs) But okay, I'm ready to acknowledge that he's not going to outgrow this. I am so glad he didn't because he is in exactly the right place. I couldn't possibly be more proud tonight to introduce to you the light of my life, the very talented Jeff Leeson. Please keep it going for my mom, my mom. You don't go, oh my God, that was unbelievable. And uh, what a speech, huh? What we said, keep it short, and she chose not to do that. And, <laughs> and she chose to come out here and tell you that I was an embarrassment for a little while. Did you read between the lines? I hoped it was a fucking face. 
I was stressed out. I had two jobs because this piece of shit was living in my basement telling me, no, mom, I can tell jokes. And I went to his shows and he was fucking shit. And I, now he wants me to do this. <laughs> See, that's, that was her original speech. And... <laughs> And there he is, Jeff the Man. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. How is, uh, what did you do for Betty for Mother's Day? What's that, sorry? What did you do for Mom for Mother's Day? Uh, I took her to Denny's. Denny's. That's right. Yeah. Nice. I took her to Denny's because uh, I'm a class act. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Good. I love your mom's intro. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she did a uh, great job. Sorry, I'm having trouble. I can't see you here. Uh, I don't know there, we there we go. Perfect. That's because you were, um, you were the main you were the main speaker. Oh. See, when I do well, this, we're only looking at you. Oh, okay. Is there a way that I can look at you just so I don't have to look at myself? Yeah, no. but he's no, he's really you not. Have to look at yourself. <laughs> I have to look at myself the whole time. This is going to just be annoying. No, no, you'll be in and out. You'll be back and forth. You'll be all around you. Oh, you wicked. Home, you're going to be so uh, dizzy. You're going to just want to puke. You know, I'm already dizzy. So <laughs> I, I'm 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 way ahead of the game here. I'm I'm yeah. dizzy already. Nice. For a totally unrelated reason. That, well, that happens. So uh, I guy. have uh, your cohort, your sidekick, your your buddy, uh, your partner in crime, uh, for your funniness uh, is is uh, was has a real job so he couldn't be on um yep. so That's i brought right. my sidekick along which is Susie. and Susie, uh during one of my episodes uh chris mcleod a guy you know and i know i do uh a little familiar with him uh coined the phrase or coined the name uh boozy Susie. nice she tends to I, don't know. I don't know why i don't know why she just drinks a lot no idea i don't know why either i have but. to drink a lot because i hang out with doug <laughs> Oh, uh, that's fair. There's nothing that's wrong fair. with that. I yeah. bring out the best in people. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. I uh, brought water for this. My apologies. Oh. I didn't know Boozy Susie was going to be here. You wow. should. You could pretend that there's not water in there, at least. Pure vodka. That's all vodka. That's it. That's pure better. vodka. There you go. Anybody tells people. you any different, you tell them they're a liar. But that is uh, pure vodka. So I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm in the drinking game as well. Perfect. 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 So yeah. you're coming to Chatham, Kent. This Saturday. this Saturday, Folks, this Saturday, this Saturday, right Kiwanis Theater. I'm Kiwanis very excited. Theater. Yes, sir. We're, we're excited to have you. Um, excited to be me, there. How did you get into being, you know, a comedian? Uh, well, I started uh, very young. I started when I was in high school, uh, when I was 14 years old. And um, how it started for me was uh, when I was really young, like probably even 10, 11 years old, I would come home every day after school and I would watch uh, comedy at Club 54 and I would watch just for laughs. They were on back to back. And that just there was something about it that just made me like fall in love with the art of stand up comedy. I got to see so many different styles of comedians. I got to see like people that became famous bef way before they were famous in their early comedy festival days. And um, so it was a really, it was almost like an education really in stand-up comedy because you were introduced to so many different types of comedians, Americans, Canadian, uh, from all over the world, um, you know, and, and like musical comedy, uh, you know, one-liners, storytellers, like every style and everything. So it was, <clears throat> it was just something I absolutely loved. And, um, and then in school, for some reason, I just, I, uh, speaking came naturally to me. Uh, uh, like a, a lot of people are very freaked out by public speaking and especially in school, people didn't want to give like uh, speeches and stuff like that. So for some reason, I was just able to, you know, naturally present well and i could uh gear it towards sort of a, a humorous uh you know more towards humor i could make people laugh very easily uh and and i enjoyed that it just was something that i liked the feeling when i graduated grade eight i got voted valedictorian 
and got a standing ovation. And it was in that moment where I was like stand, taking a step back from the podium and I looked at these people standing <laughs> and I was like, whatever this feeling is right now, I want that every day. Mm. And then it was that combined with watching comedy where I was like, maybe there's something there. And, uh, and then it was my mom who got me in uh, to my first like uh, real show when I was her fault. Yeah, it's totally her fault, man. She, yeah. she was very supportive from day one. And, you know, when I said I wanted to do comedy, she said, how? Like, what's the process? And I said, as far as I know, you go to a comedy club and do five minutes uh, on amateur night. And then you work your way up from there. And she had recently gone to a comedy club where we lived in London and saw somebody like get heckled or something. And she was like, you're way too young to do that. I can't let you do that. But um, if you really want to try this, let's do our own show. Let's invite our friends and family and your hockey team of people you go to school with uh, to a show. And we'll put it on ourselves uh, in the auditorium of her work. And um you try it out, and if it and if it's still something you want to do after that, then we can work towards um, you know doing it at, at a comedy club. Wow. And so I did one of those when I was fourteen. I did another one a few months later after I had turned fifteen, and a few months after that, by the time I was sixteen, I was I was doing my first uh, uh, set at a at a comedy club, and I was just hooked from moment one. That's I was right. terrible. I was yeah. absolutely horrible, but <laughs> like it wasn't even really comedy I was doing to, to give you an idea of how bad it was like normally when you're a comedian, you would you would have um, you would have five minutes uh, on an amateur night or something like that. My first show, because it was our show, I, I ended up doing 30 minutes. Oh, my God. Of horrible comedy. Oh, my so God. It's like <laughs> it's bad enough to listen to a person who's trying to learn comedy do five minutes of horrible comedy mm. but to have to listen to that same person for 30 minutes and it's like your friend's son or something like that some nonsense it's it's just crazy it's like you need uh, a solid five you need a solid i, I mean i had no, i didn't have a solid two so, <laughs> you know but it, you know Are you it still was, talking about comedy or sex life <laughs> well the, the sex life is current Oh, nice! I, did. You worked up to I two. do not have a solid two right now at all. No, uh, I'm working with a mediocre 32 at best. Okay, um, but yeah, I did not have a solid two minutes of stand-up comedy. At well, that if you're time. working on a solid two for the other, apparently, if you imagine your grandpa uh, emptying his colostomy bag, it helps to you know, oh. lengthen your time. I I think the time's over at that. I think <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the end if i it does if it i'm really with does. you and i'm all of a sudden thinking about my grandpa in any way uh yeah. our our whole relationship is just done it's done like that's yeah i gotta just say listen uh i think obviously i'm soft uh it's because of <laughs> I'm thinking about my grandfather right yeah. now. And I don't know why, because well, you're I'm here not. and you're naked and I should be thinking about you, but I'm yeah. not. And yeah. my grandpa's disgusting and you need to go home now. <laughs> I'm soft. So uh, I love this uh, young Jeff pose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there he is. He is in Roebuck. <laughs> Look at that guy. Where, what, where did you even, where did that... Uh, uh, it's a place called the Interweb. <laughs> mm. Interesting. I just put your name is in. That in. Is that in Chatham? I was, uh, no, the inter Interweb, one of yes. Your, it's in is that Chatham. one of your stores? The Interweb your stores starts in and ends in Chatham. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, uh, uh, I don't even know what year that was. But those, I was just telling someone last night, there's a few, a bunch of those pictures, and that's mm -hmm. one of them. And that ended up being the art. I think the one you showed or whatever I was doing was like the art. Yeah, there it is. I'm sitting on a tiny chair. And oh, I could yeah, tell by and, the and look in your the, face. You were on a very it, small chair. I was, and it was the it was the um, the that ended up being the art for a, a stand up comedy special that I put out that was on Amazon Prime for a while. Ooh, and it, was, it was called Off the Cuff. Yeah, 
And, and so that was the art for that. But I was just telling somebody the pictures I had, like I look amazing in those pictures because I had, I was on for about three months before those were taken. I was on a miracle diet oh. taking this fucking shake that <clears throat> was just so unhealthy. It worked. And I became like a completely different person, but it was just a completely unhealthy way to do it. Miracle. We'll talk what, later. what is this miracle? <laughs> Yeah, what is this you speak of? Oh, I think they got busted by the cops at this point. Like it was oh. so bad. I think they're out of business. I haven't heard from it of it in several years. But hmm. <coughs> yeah, I I took this stuff all to to have those pictures taken. And like within six months, I'd say of having those pictures taken, whenever I would go do a show, they'd be like, "Are you the guy? Are you that? Are you are this you guy? guy? Or are you his dad?" And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes I would show up and pretend to be the comedian's father and that he, he couldn't make it, but I was there. Yeah, to, I, got a, I got a solid five right here for you. Yeah. <laughs> By then I did have a solid two. Still oh, good, not good. still not in the in the sexual department. No, that's no, that's You're never changed. That. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. No, I've given up at this point. It could be something, it could be because I'm I'm only thinking about my grandfather the whole time, though. Now that I think about it, yeah, see, I that could you. be playing a factor in my yeah. mind. So yeah, you I should really... stop thinking about him Don't and think about his that. philosophy. That or thing. baseball. Just think about, you know, absolutely the, the light towards the end of the tunnel. So uh so I of course, creeped you and found some relatively funny stuff of you. And I, I want to show this one here for everyone because I know Susie will love it. And I, I'm sure that our, you know, one and a half uh, watchers will love it too. So, one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you got a midget watching this thing? <laughs> oh, we love midgets. We love midgets. <laughs> I love midgets too. They're awesome. Yes. And that's <laughs> great that. It's great that they watch this, that, that guy or girl. That's our following. One of them. One of them. So there's actually three midgets watching, which makes oh, one and a half person. Wow. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's three, that's gonna... three viewers. That's great. We're going but, to hell. Yes. Yeah. That's well, perfect. Let's watch this one here. This is good. Hey. If you want to know what it looks like to do a show in Canadian comedy, you do it in front of a fucking goose. What's that? It's a loon? Exactly my point. <laughs> Where the fuck am I right now? <laughs> you do it in front of a goose. Ah, uh, that's a loon? This guy's an idiot. <laughs> I gotta yeah. say, I love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks, Canadians. You know, we, we call a loon a loon. You know, it's it's interesting because I mean, obviously that thing is on the loony, and I've I obviously have you've heard had a loony. It. Yeah, I've had a loony. I yeah. you know I'm familiar with a loon. Like I've heard the term loon, mm -hmm. but I don't think until that time that I'd ever looked at a loon. Like I knew it was on the loony and it is a thing but i don't think i ever looked at it so like my initial reaction to that thing the whole time was was goose because i just had never looked at a loon but that it's lady water. Yeah. she did not want me to leave that town uh thinking i was standing in front of a goose well now you know right you now i know that. forever in chatham yeah. there's a lot of loons we have a lot of loons yeah <laughs> the bird no. <laughs> no. People. People lose. Yeah. Didn't didn't quite think so. Had to clarify, but seemed like it was the other one for sure. You'll you'll figure it out when you get here. Yeah, you'll be here for a while. Yeah, you'll uh, make yeah, it real quick. I've, I've been there. That's why I asked. Yeah. 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 So I mean, th there's an art to uh, improvisation, right? You can have a, a solid two. Uh, when okay. you get on stage, uh, and then you know something happens, and you go off that way. Hmm. Um, I call it off script. I do it all the time uh, when I'm doing weddings, and something ha funny happens, you know, and we go off off script. Uh, typically, it's when you know uh, the the bride is giving the groom his ring, and and I find out he's really soft hands, 
And then I start thinking about the inappropriate things that come to mind when I think of soft hands, you know, you know, lubriderm <laughs> and soft lotions and time alone and et, et cetera. And uh, right. so, I mean, I, I completely get it. And, and sometimes you just can't stop. I mean, you would, it, it's unorganic. It's not a word, but unorganic to stop. So I love the fact that you just sort of pick up and go and, and, and go with it and, uh, and make it your own. So um, do you find that your, your favorite way to go, obviously, it, uh, to, to, go, to go alone? <laughs> are, we, are we still talking about comedy here? Or is this whole show just me trying to figure out whether you're talking about people or animals or comedy or sex? Is that the... Yes, basically. There's is this a like prize a game at the show? End. Oh, good. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Is it a bottle of Lubriderm? <laughs> Some Lubriderm and Kleenex? It's a bottle of Jerkins. Congratulations. Here's your bottle of Lubriderm. <laughs> bottle of Jerkins. <laughs> That's for anybody looking to get on the the engagement show here. You'll That's get right. a bottle of Lubriderm if you win. Every, they should all come with the lube. Yeah. Um, I agree. We, we send it to you in advance of the, of the show. Oh, so, yeah, I, I so, still haven't got mine yet. So my I oh, you can't oppose as a motherfucker. Yeah, these are so. not soft at all. So <laughs> I'm very excited. We'll find out on Saturday at the show. Yeah, yeah, we sure will. Well, hopefully my lubricant gets here before then, and hopefully. I can have a, a quick, not, quick rub down. If not, I'll bring a bottle and throw it on the stage for you. Please do. All right, all right. So, um, how you can go off on a tangent? I, I love this mm. one here. I'm going to play. I, I only have a couple of clips I want to show, but this one here I thought was hilarious, so only because well, you'll know why. I'll show. Roll the tape. What do you do, Brad? <laughs> what kind of uh, meat do you inspect, Brad? Red meat, white meat. <clears throat> Red meat matters. Good luck getting that fucking off the ground. <laughs> I'd keep that to just here. Don't be going on social media with that shit. You're going to get buried. And where do you uh, where do you inspect the meat? I go to uh, well, just slaughter plants around. Do they know you're coming, or do you bust in? Do you have a badge? Oh fuck! I hope you have a badge, Brad. I hope you're fucking busting doors down. Just poof, what's up? I'm Brad. Here's the badge. Whip your meat out right now. I want the red stuff, the white stuff. Give me all of it. Do you know what that reminds me of? A uh, conversation me of, probably you and I had? No, it reminds me of our friend, Deb, who is a measurement analyst. She is. Yeah. Nice. Take we that. Kept asking her to, to, to analyze with measurements. Mm -hmm. So. Sorry. Yeah. Just a Susie tangent. <laughs> so. Size really does matter. To it does. It does. You have I a measurement her, analyst her around. Job. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's it's a full-time job. It's not a fake job at all. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, that crowd looked like a typical, you know, farm crowd of people that, you know, out on a Friday night, mm. you know, hitched their wagons outside and came on in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. That was in Wingham, Ontario. Wingham. Yes. Yep. Shout out to Wingham. Yep. Yes. Yeah, love Wingham. The crowds there always very. Uh, they've always been great, actually. In yep. that in that whole area, they're uh, they're always a lot of fun. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. nice. Uh, one more, my favorite, because it uh, represents the brothers. I can say that because I'm black from the waist down, where it matters. Sir, I gotta know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> We're inside. <laughs> the lights are pointed this way. And you opted for sunglasses and a hat. That's a lot of fucking shade, man. <laughs> What's your name, my friend? <laughs> Fozy? That's your name. That's what's on your birth certificate. Fozy. How do you spell it? F-O-Z-Z-I. So you got two Z's right there in the middle of your name. You wear all the fucking sunglasses you want, man. <laughs> Woo! 
What is your name, sir? Brom. What is it? Brom. Brom? Brom, yeah. <laughs> Fozy, we got a competitor over here. His name is not Cooler. I said we had a competitor, but let's not get it twisted. Fozy, two Zs. Brom sounds unfinished. <laughs> it sounds like his parents were filling out a name and they got B R O M. And somebody was like, hey. And they were like, yeah. And they just walked away. <laughs>
Yeah. And the Chris McLeods of the world and the Sons of Kent and 94.3 CKSY and Cool FM 91 and the country station CFCO. There you go. So even if you did want to sponsor, we couldn't even fit another logo on there. Nope. So nope, that's we're done. not your fault at all. No, no, no. You can't reduce mine. Mine's pretty no. small as it is. So absolutely. Teeny tiny logo. So uh, I'm excited for the show. Anything we should be uh, worried about? Is this like a Gallagher show? Should I bring some plastic wrap or is there a, sp a spit zone? Or There is nobody will spit on you. Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. It's Chatham. Yeah. Nobody from the stage will spit Thank on you. you. Nobody you in the show will spit on you. Yep. Uh, nobody will uh, be breaking watermelons. Okay. That would be gimmick infringement. That's right. Uh, on Gallagher, nobody will be smashing anything of any kind. There is absolutely nothing to worry about. The only thing you need to do, Chatham, after you're done with your quilting, is <laughs> drive over to the Kiwanis Theater, grab yourself a drink, sit with your friends, and have a great fucking night. Just That's enjoy right. your night. Have a laugh. Forget about the world. I don't talk about politics, religion, sexual orientation, Nothing that makes people leave angry. I, I mean, you might leave anger. That's totally separate. That, that's up that's, to you, right? That's, that's on yeah. you. When that's you're an your angry person, problems. I can't change that. But that's right. I'm not going to trigger you with anything that's going to, you know, I, I, my show is about having fun. It's about people coming together, enjoying the night, forgetting their troubles at the door, and laughing, just hopefully. And All then, the things uh, I love. And then, yeah, and then you so go back halfway to your through the show. Benefit. If I get up and stomp out in a huff because I feel like I was triggered, he uh, just not... has he's having a problem. That's all. He's a woman. <laughs> I hey, mean, can I bring my fifteen-year-old? How cool a mom are you? Well, I'm pretty cool. <laughs> if you're if you're a wicked mom, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if wicked. you're like I'm wicked, not, mom. I'm not really a good yeah. mom, so if probably you're... yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mom would have taken me at, 50, at okay. 15. Like, it's, you know, it's, yeah, there's nothing uh, at 15 and he has access to the internet. Well, she's exposed to Doug every day. Yeah. So, oh. I mean, like, yeah. that's probably enough. Yeah. Perfect. You're, you're okay. tame compared to what she's I, heard from Yeah, me. you're totally fine. Yeah, totally okay. fine. 15 Good. is absolutely fine. Good. So let's remind everyone again, uh, get your tickets. Here's... Here's the details, you know. You're going to also see Mr. Mister Tide White there. Uh, get your Tides Whites and Tidy Whiteys, uh, you know, at the door. <laughs> and uh, get your tickets at Kiwanis Theater. It's coming up on the 14th. It's 7 p.m. This Saturday. This, this Saturday. Saturday. This Saturday. It's right not after like, the quilting expo. Yeah, yeah. People, we're not talking <laughs> like it's not next Saturday the Saturday after. It's no. this coming this, Saturday. This Saturday. So not, you know, the Saturday we're going to run into next is the time for the show. What do you do for the whole hour? Like if the door is open at seven and the show doesn't start till eight. What do you do for a whole hour? Well, a lot of people don't get there right at seven, but those that do usually just drink. Uh, oh, for, okay. I, yeah. I should show we'll get there early. Just for about, yeah. Because what ends up happening at these kind of shows, because uh, a lot of our shows, they have servers that come to your table, like if it's at a comedy club or something. Yeah. So at these shows, the bar is like, I, th I think, outside of the theater. So people get there early to grab a couple of drinks because as it starts to fill in, the lines get longer and longer at the bar. So that people mm -hmm. want to get a couple of drinks in. But Perfect. you can come anytime. Like, you don't have to get there at 7. You can come... 745, 750 if you want to pre-drink at home or whatever you're doing and just come in and we're go. Gonna right to your seats. We're gonna do both. We're gonna pre-drink and we're gonna show <laughs> up early. Yeah. We're gonna throw our nice. quilts on our seat that we want to reserve. Smart. We're gonna go to the bar and come back yeah. to our quilt and yeah. enjoy the show. It's gonna be a comfortable night for you guys. Very cozy. Yeah. Very cozy. Yeah, absolutely. Very cozy. So uh Jeff, I'm looking forward to this. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I you know. Can't wait to hear see the show and uh, and heckle you from. What do you do with hecklers? Just I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it it honestly depends on what type of heckler it is because mm -hmm. there there are really two types of hecklers. There's one that they do have something that can add to the show. Right. That they they will give you something and they either they they might not even know it, but and and then once a it's value done, added heckler. Yeah, one, but once it's done, it's done, and they shut the fuck up. Yeah. There is another heckler 
where they will say something, you deal with it, you go to move on, they'll say something again, and they're trying to hog the show yeah. and not shut up. And that one is the tough one where eventually you have, like, for me, my show is not about, you know, leaning into somebody or making somebody feel uncomfortable or making people feel, you know, I, I, I want people to have fun. But if you're like constantly bickering or the other thing is, and the big thing for me is if you are bothering the rest of the people who paid their money and they're, and, and now you're like taking the show away from them, that's like, that, that's tough for me. So then you got to kind of like shut them down in a, you know, in a, in a more harsh, direct, direct way. Just, just call them an asshole and move mm. on. Well, see, and that's the thing is like, you have to be careful too when you call them an asshole. Cause if you just do it up front, the audience may not think they're an asshole yet. Right. So they might turn on you. Now you've got a whole, now you've made everyone turn. But if it's unanimous, this person's being a fucking asshole <laughs> and we all agree. And then you say asshole, it's like, you could run for mayor the next day because those people are like, yes, somebody had to call that piece of shit an asshole. Right. So Doug, you're an asshole. Carry on. I know. I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm quite okay with that. Yeah. So are you worried about anyone like charging the stage, you know, David Chappelle or slapping you on Friday, on Saturday? No, I, I mean, no more worried than normal. No, well, that's uh, good. That's you know, good. it's like you, uh, there's always a possibility that stuff happens, but no, first of all, uh, we travel with uh, a few security. So if anybody did what? attempt that, yeah, if anybody did what attempt that, security? they'd be in a lot of trouble. It's not my own security, but oh. we just travel with. I'm not even, a, I can't even really talk about it. So it's your people, mom. People shouldn't know who they are. It's yeah, my mom. mom's pretty vicious. <laughs> yeah. She's, she doesn't like people attacking her son. So uh, she'll hey, jump out. She's hey, always at the mama show, bear. but you'll never know where she is. Mom, uh, yeah. And then jumps out. But yeah, so no, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, that was crazy. And that whole thing is like, you know, fucking insane, especially the Will Smith thing. Mm -hmm. um, the other one with Chappelle was like, you know, that was crazy too. But yeah, it's not something like, I don't want to always be worried about that. So it's not something I want to even no. have, you know, on, on my mind as I go into these things. And throughout 22 years of comedy, it could literally always happen. Like it's always you know, now I guess it's brought to the forefront, but it's happened lots of other times throughout history as well. Times you'll never hear about. It's just we live in this, you know, instant cell phone age where you can know about it. And obviously at the Oscars, mm -hmm. it was every, you know, Everywhere. everybody. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not worried. And plus, to be honest, like 99% of people that come to a show are calm and there for a laugh. It's like if you have somebody that's, you know, about to snap or something, then that's something you can't prevent. But for the most part, people are just there to have fun. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys hang on the line for a minute while I say uh, adieu to these fine folks. Uh, this is episode uh, season five, episode one. Next uh, bunch of episodes are going to be uh, quite a different. Uh, as I said, it's sort of like boomerang around here with uh, with engagement. So thank you for coming to engagement. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>